I was, I was very excited about that. I feel like it's going to put us on the map, so to speak. It's something, it's a shot in the arm that we've needed for several years. Um, it's going to bring a lot of beauty to South Knoxville. It's going to bring some business to South Knoxville. Uh, I think we're going to attract back some of the tourism that we lost several years ago when, when uh, traffic was routed up 40 instead of up Chapman Highway. Not that we need, not that we need that much board traffic, but I just I'm thoroughly excited about it. I think it's going to bring um, uh, a lot of value also to the property uh, around that area. Um, you know, I can't say enough about it, and that's was one of the main reasons that I wanted to get involved with County Commission so I could uh, be a part of that, see that grow, see that develop. I mean, I know it's going to take 20 years probably to develop to what it needs to be, but that's going to be a phenomenal site when it's all finished, you know, when the football games are going on and those condos are developed and uh, you've got the shops down. It's kind of like a river walk. I don't know if you've been to Chattanooga, but they've taken the same thing and done down there, and it is just unbelievable. Mr. Brown? I would agree with Chuck on that. I think it's it's one of the greatest things that's happened to South Knoxville in the last 50 years. Um, South Knoxville has kind of had the connotation as being the other side of the tracks uh, as far as the city is concerned. And I think this is a great opportunity to tie that whole Chapman Highway corridor together all the way to, to Seymour. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm on the Board of Directors from the South Knox Seymour Chamber of Commerce. We have a new group in uh, South Knoxville that's closer downtown called the South Knoxville, Downtown South Knoxville Business Association uh, that is getting formed and, and working on a couple of issues right now. I think that all of us working together can make this a, a great project for South Knoxville. And uh, as Chuck mentioned, it is gonna, it's going to take some years to get done, but uh, not only Chattanooga, but San Antonio, uh, St. Louis, there are a lot of other cities that have done the same thing, and it's done nothing but to help the the growth in the area. And as he mentioned, also raise you know raise property values and give people a little more pride in the community. I'm hoping that they will be able to extend it all the way up to the Arms Park. I think that would be great. Um, and we both attended a uh, uh, grand opening ribbon cutting of the uh, archway there at the Mary James Park uh, yesterday. And um, this is Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there, that, again, that's going to tie in from IMS around. So it's going to be something that our grandkids, you know, will be able to enjoy. Maybe not. It's not going to be completed totally in my lifetime, but uh, it's a start. And and if you don't, you know, a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. And I think we've taken that first step now, and I think it's going to be a great. Uh, boon to us there and I'm I'm behind it 100 percent you know it's been uh, a tough year financially for a lot of people Knox County is not immune to that um, especially when it comes budget time um, I want to ask you all a little bit about what first of all your qualifications are regarding analyzing a budget of uh, the caliber of Knox County's budget and also how you would go about making cuts or, or trimming fat on a budget like Knox County's. Let's start with you, Mr. Brown. Well, first thing, nobody can be an expert in everything. I think that we have to rely on the managers, supervisors, whatever, in, in each of these budget areas to bring information to the commission. Uh, but I think the commission has a responsibility of taking a look at that and, uh, you know, while we may not know where to cut a particular line item, uh, there are certain questions I think that can be asked that would uh, help us get some more insight as far as what is going on. Um, one thing that was done this time with the nonprofits, uh, the mayor picked a, a panel to look over the applications and so forth and so on. But uh, from what I understand, they weren't given, you know, all the information that they needed uh, to be able to make a proper uh, disbursement, in my opinion, of, of the funds available. And the bottom line is, when you work it the way they did, percentages down the line, uh, there are several, uh, several good charities down the end of the line that got left out. And one in particular is, is uh, Dr. Kimon on Chapman Highway. Uh, he provides medical services for anybody who can't uh, afford it. Uh, but he's not a professional grant writer, and it seems like that uh, uh, in this particular case, the ones that wrote the best grants got the most money. 
So I don't think that's hardly fair. And I, I think, again, this was the first attempt at doing this, but I, I think with some refining, uh, next time that committee can have a little bit more to work with and, and know more where they're going. And I think we maybe need to do that in some of the other areas too, uh, even into the, the school budget. I think that uh, while we may not be experts in, in education, uh, as I said, we have to rely on the information they give us. But um, I think with by being more attentive to what is going on within their particular uh, budget area and asking questions, it makes them more conscious of what they're doing also. And I think that's going to help us. Well, one of the things I pride myself on is I've been involved with budgets for the last 20 years. I own my own real estate investment company, and every project that we buy to fix up to sell, we have a budget. And basically, if you don't make the budget, then you don't make the money. Uh, and same thing uh, with my involvement with the city of Knoxville, my day job, uh, everything we do is a budget. I mean, you have X amount of dollars to run our building with. You have X amount of dollars to do improvements. So. I'm used to staying on budget and, and trying to help figure out how we can cut the budget in ways to make other parts of the budget better. Um, you know, that would be my experience with that. Like I said, I've been dealing with it for, for almost 20 years. Uh, it's um, not being prevalent to some of the information that, that they have seen, you know, when they're looking over these budgets and everything. I think we need uh, some more community involvement. I think we need some teachers involved. To hear their side of where they're losing their money, where they need to have their money brought back. Same thing with the libraries. These people that are losing funding from the county's budget, um, you know, let's talk to these folks. Let's have a committee from the teachers from the library association. Let's hear their side of what they need, how their how their expenses have increased from the year before. That what we've got to do to maintain all these things and keep them going and operating properly. Um, and I feel like there's probably uh, some more ways that we can make this budget a little fatter, you know, not necessarily by trimming certain